Scott Cannon coming to you live on WLTH 13:7 a.m. from the greatest city in all the world. Gary, Indiana. And this is the counterpoint. Hey ladies! The month of March is Women's History Month. So in celebration of all the mothers, sisters, aunties, nieces, daughters out there, we decided to take a look at some of the great women out there who've made the world that we live in a better place. Well, folks, here we are, the second week of March, 2019, a year so far in the future that I'm pretty sure that we all thought that we'd have flying cars by now. Yep, I'm gonna keep talking about it until I get mine. And we're also so far in the future that we as black people actually take for granted that when we get home from work, school, or kicking it, that when we sit down in front of the boob tube to relax and turn our brains off, that there's gonna be something with black people in it for us to watch. But what if I told you that at one point in time, there were no black people on TV? Nope, no George Jeffersons or J.J. Evans, no Oprahs or Joy Reeds, no Insecures or Empire, which is having its season six premiere tonight, which is what I will be watching. Nope, nothing. Until one woman, whose legacy has largely been purposely buried and forgotten, came on the scene. You see, in 1950, a gorgeous and talented young woman named Hazel Scott was the first black person to ever be the star of their own television show in these United States, starring in the appropriately named Hazel Scott Show, which showcased her virtuosic piano skills and sultry vocals that captured universal acclaim from audiences and critics. Though only 30 years old at the time, Scott was a seasoned veteran who had been performing since the age of three and was awarded a scholarship to the prestigious Juilliard School of Music at the age of eight. By the age of 16, she had her own radio show and was performing with Count Basie she performed classical, jazz, blues, boogie woogie, show tunes, and Broadway standards becoming an attraction all over America. By the time she was 25, she was already making about a cool million dollars in today's money, selling out clubs. Then Hazel took over Hollywood, starring in hit movies with Lena Horne and the biggest stars in Tinseltown. But in spite of that, Hazel never lost track of the fact that she was a black woman and was very conscious of the images that she portrayed on screen. She refused to play maids or roles that she found demeaning to the black community. And she was always a proponent of civil rights, once even being escorted out of the city of Austin, Texas for refusing to perform a concert in a segregated venue. She also sued a restaurant in Washington State because they refused to serve her for being black. Oh yeah, this was in the 1940s almost a decade before MLK and the Civil Rights Movement came to prominence. She also married Adam Clayton Powell. Yeah, that Adam Clayton Powell, becoming the new power couple of civil rights in America, which ultimately led to her demise as a star in America. When left-wing performers were having their careers destroyed left and right during the Red Scare of the 1950s, which was basically when the American government accused anybody who fought for civil rights of being a Russian puppet and a communist, sort of like today. Hazel Scott was one of the first performers to lose everything. Her groundbreaking show was immediately taken off the air in spite of being extremely popular and critically acclaimed. She went from making the equivalent of a million dollars a year to barely being able to get bookings in America, forcing her to move to France in the late 50s where she remained in exile until the late 60s, when all the segregation laws had been struck down in the wake of the civil rights movement. But the damage had already been done. She spent the final years of her life performing sporadically in clubs and on TV, but was never giving her due as a pioneer and an icon before dying at the age of 61 in 1981. But her legacy lives on in every show that we see on TV today that features black people from Empire and Star to Blackish to the 9,000 different versions of CSI and Law and Order. It's no longer a big deal to have black people on TV. And that's a good thing. 
But it's also important to not forget the woman who paved the way and paid a very steep price for what we all take for granted. Okay, folks, you can chop it up with me on Twitter at The Chemist Lives. The Chemist is spelled with a K as I am a product of the Gary Community School System. We can talk about politics, music, sports. You can tell me how terrible I am at this job. Or you can listen to me every Monday from 6 to 8 on Issues and Answers with Jonathan Booz. I am Scott Cannon. That was the counterpoint on WLTH 1370 and 92.7 for everyone in the Chicagoland area or 1370.com. No, oh, I'm sorry. 1370WLTH.com for people, anybody around the world who wants to listen to the live stream. God bless the working class. God bless organized labor. And I am out, humans.